Good morning, Meeting House Alliston. For the past five weeks in church, we've been hearing sermons about Jesus and justice. A few weeks ago, I was asked in home church to share some thoughts about our own personal biases in relationship to racism. And I was asked again if I could share that a little fuller for our newsletter today. I would like you to consider a group of space travelers who have been beamed down to planet Earth. They know nothing at all about Earth. Now, unfortunately, they are beamed down into a McDonald's restaurant. Their task is to look around and study and then report back what they have seen. Now, again, unfortunately, the perspective that they took back to space was simply what they saw in McDonald's. Sometimes our understanding of different cultures is as limited as the understanding of the space travelers. Many of us have traveled to different countries and if I was to ask you, what did you see? What was the culture of those countries? You would very quickly tell me about their food, their clothes, their language, their music, and you'd be right. Those are all part of the culture. But like an iceberg, they are the things that we see in the top one-tenth of the iceberg. An iceberg is nine-tenths underwater and we never see it. And just like culture, the culture of a country or the culture of a person is nine-tenths below the surface. Those are the things that make a person or a country tick. Now, you've traveled. If I asked you, tell me about Mexican attitudes towards femicide, would you be able to tell me that part of their culture, that deeper part? Or Cuban views towards gender roles, South African views towards beauty, or Chinese views of the family? If we were thinking about Canadian culture, could you tell me how your views about minority groups or bilingualism or fundamentalism or immigration have formed your views of different kinds of people? Our journey towards becoming culturally competent and really understanding those who are different from us doesn't begin with learning everything we can about a culture because that's impossible. Nine-tenths of cultures are below the surface. We can't do that for every group that we meet. Becoming culturally competent begins with ourselves. It begins with understanding why we hold the views we do. It begins with exploring our own identity. Do we think the way we do because of our nationality? because of our religious or our political orientations, or because of our sex, social class, education, or maybe our vocation. Why do we think the way we do? Why do you think of others the way you do? Do we realize that there are different ways to think about absolutely every issue in life, and that every person has a reason for thinking the way they do? Cultures are not right or wrong. They're simply different. To give you an example, there was an international study done where a group of participants had to look at a tray with 20 items on the tray, and they had to put them into certain classifications. Westerners looked at the items and they classified all of the food items under a category called food. They looked at knives and forks and spatulas, and they grouped those under a title, implements. Then they looked at Tupperware, plastic bag, and jars, and they called those ones containers. Now, there were African participants, and the people from those countries, they looked at the items, and they categorized them completely differently. They put a potato and a knife together, because what other way would you do it? Potatoes and knives go together. Each of the groups, the Westerners and the people from Africa, group the things differently. Culture is neither right nor wrong. It's just simply a different way of doing things. Most of the time, people don't even realize that it's culture that influences their behavior. 
Canadian doctors might not realize that culture impacts their decision, but perhaps our attitude towards the elderly is responsible for the lack of therapeutic interventions that seniors receive. Many seniors struggle from depression. Doctors say it's just part of aging. And they're rarely offered medication or counseling. Many seniors with COVID were not sent to hospital. Was our cultural attitude towards our seniors responsible for that? Teachers likewise might not consider that culture impacts their grading and their teaching. African and Asian students, for the most part, are taught to listen and not to ask questions. In our culture, every child that raises their hand and participates gets extra marks. It's not a problem, except when two cultures collide. An African or an Asian student comes into our system. Children and teachers in both systems know and understand the expectations. We act the way we do automatically because our culture has conditioned us that our way is best or perhaps it's the only way of doing things. It's called being ethnocentric. And ethnocentric is evaluating other people's culture based on the standards of our own. Thinking our political party, our view of history, our way of raising children is the best or the only way is being ethnocentric. When we think our way is best, we make assumptions and judgments and they often hurt people and they are often not fair. As Christians, we need to become culturally sensitive and culturally competent. In light of today's climate especially, it is imperative for each of us to understand our own cultural biases and how they've shaped our thinking, our behavior, our values, our speech. I would just like you to always remember that there are more restaurants that will give you a much better perspective and a much different perspective on food and people in the world than simply a McDonald's restaurant.